Hey, it's Calvin Cummings here and I'm going to be teaching you all about interactive music theory and this is level one. This is le lesson one out of 14 lessons and what's going to be covered within this program here is a whole pile of ways that you're going to be able to uh, recognize what music looks like on uh, paper so that when you uh, get given that as a musician you're able to recognize what notes need to be played and when to play them and how to play them. So. For the sake of this first lesson, we're going to become familiar with the five lines of a music stave. It's also known as a staff, but we're going to go get into that a little bit further down the track. We're going to practice drawing well-shaped ovals for our note heads, which means that we're going to be able to get that nice sort of shape uh, that we want for the notes when it's uh, you know at the top end or the low end of that stave or staff. We're going to learn how to draw a treble clef, which is really important, especially for the majority of the music that we're going to be, going to be looking at. We're going to look at bar and bar lines and figure out what they're all about. We're going to recognize simple melodies and rhythms from oral examples and that's something for you to be able to do at home. And become familiar with the terms treble, bass, bars, bar line, note and clefs. Which are all going to be really important uh, words for us uh, for the sake of this first lesson. Okay, so let's have a quick look here. Right, and just as we note the pages... Um, at the bottom of this YouTube feed here, we're going to have the uh, Wee Workbook, which is, and these pages here are page 4, 5, 28, and 50, which is kind of a puzzly sort of page. Uh, I'm going to refer to that particular work that I'm going to need. So just make sure that, as well as subscribing to this channel, that you cruise down there and uh, you download yourself a copy or you get a paper copy of that so that we are well and truly underway. So, this lesson here, just a reminder of the activities. We're going to look at the stable or staff. We're going to place the notes on the lines or the spaces. We're going to draw well-shaped notes. We're going to draw ourselves some triple clefs, some bar and bar lines. There's going to be a little bit of an oral puzzle, so that's something we have to do at home to be able to listen into this particular notes and figure out, well, okay, does that match up to that or that? Uh, we're going to have a look at a little bit of a quiz game, which uh, might be something for you to do, to do at home with uh, somebody nearest and dearest to you, and there's a wee extension puzzle there for you as well. So, let's have a look at it. So, first of all, a stave. A stave, uh, which can also be called a staff, has five lines and four spaces. So here are five lines, we've got one, two, three, four, and five. And within that, we've got these four gaps. One, two, three, four. So we've got four spaces within these five lines. Now, these are really important because what they do is within triple clefs, bass clefs, whatever it happens to be, this stave or staff is able to tell us how high the pitch of our note is or how low the pitch of our note happens to be. So it's really important to be able to get that right. So what I'm going to do here is going to have a little bit of a trial run of this. Now, what I'm going to do is rather than clicking these buttons here, I'm just going to draw a couple of them in here. So as we go through here, We'll just draw that in here. So, oh, it's probably a little bit high actually. I'm going to try that one again. So, because that one is there on the line, and you'll notice that it's, it's kind of an overshot, but it could be better, um, that it, it's on the line, but it goes about halfway down that space. Now, this, this may seem a bit pedantic when it comes to handwriting and things, but it's really important that we don't go too far down. Otherwise, we confuse it for being on the space rather than on the line. So, for example, let's go this one here. So that one's on that space there. You notice it's got a bit of a gap there at the top and a bit of a gap there just underneath. It is definitely on the line. We've got one here. Oops, I'll backtrack that one. So on the space there, on the space here, and on the space there. Okay, so all of them have that kind of not a hundred percent circular but they've got this kind of overly sort of shape which slots into the gap so on the line there on the line there on the line there on the line there and on the line there um, however it's not and I'll show you an example of something that I don't want it to be it's not covering that now that there as much as it's on the line is also completely filling all those spaces so we don't want that okay so make sure that when you pop it in the space that it's on the line but it's no like you've got a gap at the top and the bottom so it's quite clearly on that line and not on the space so in this particular case if we were talking about a treble clef which would be a symbol like this 
that would be an F note, a D, a B, a G, and an E. And I know that just from spotting that those oval type shapes, that note shape, is physically on those particular locations. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to do exactly the same, but this time we're going to fill the spaces. So this time, notice that it does hit the top of the line, it does hit the, oh sorry, it does hit that line, it does hit that line, but it fills the entire space. So by making sure that we filled the space, we've got that at the top and the bottom, it means that that one there is quite clearly in that space, not on the line. So we've got another one here. Whoops, no, we'll try that one again. Pays when you're going through your work booklet to be able to make sure you're using pencil, you can easily erase this. Yep, and there. Now, if we were working on a treble clef here, I'll try that again. If we're working on a treble clef, in this particular case here, we've got an E note, a C note, an A note, and an F note. Those ones there are going to be able to quite clearly tell us that those notes are their own thing. They're now, if they're on the line, they're different note. They're either one below or one above. Okay. Now what we're going to do here, within your booklets, and all of this work here is currently on page four of your work booklets, which is uh, downloadable just from clicking on the link below. So you need to make sure that within your booklets there that you've got some of these notes here which are drawn on the lines. So here we've got one, lines, and it uh, doesn't have to be in order. We can mix and match this up. There we go. All of those on the lines. And we've also got some of the space. So here we go. We'll go in F. Well, oh, do that one a wee bit better. So we've got that one there. Go that one there. That one there. And that one there. Just as long as you've either got them on the line, which has a little bit of space above and below, or in on the space where it shouldn't or shouldn't have any space there uh, between that line and that line there. It should quite clearly be filling that entire zone. Now, treble clef. When we're sitting at a piano, uh, there's two halves of the piano. Now, on the right hand, so in this hand here, you're looking at some, some of the higher notes. Now, from right in the middle there is a note which is called middle C which turns out to be around about here. So it's just about there. However, it's there on a particular set of notes which travels around this thing. This here is called a treble clef. Now the treble clef basically means that we are looking at a range of notes which happen to be from middle C up. So we happen to be looking at middle C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and so on, and it'll carry on all the way through until we get to a point there that we uh, start going into the stratosphere and we start really struggling. So, within this, a treble clef, uh, which used to be known as a G clef, um, starts off around about where a G note would happen to be on it. So, you'll see these five lines. Now, can we count from the top? One, two, three, four. It's the fourth line down. We're just past where we curve and get that sort of shape into place. So you'll notice from the tracing in your booklet that it starts just below that fourth line. It reaches up to uh, that middle line, the third line. Uh, curves itself around to, oh, excuse me, um, to the bottom line and then comes around again. So I'll show you again. So basically that fourth line reaches up to the middle line, comes down to the bottom, reaches around carries above the cliff, in fact, or sorry, the stave, and then basically comes back down and curves upon itself. Now what you have to do on page five of your workbook, which is available down below, is that you need to trace yourself a whole copy of those, and then do yourself some of your own ones. So fourth line down, reach up to the middle line, come down to the bottom line, go just past the stave or um, staff, come down through and end up there. So you're starting off at that fourth line down, you're coming up to the middle line, wrap yourself around to the bottom, wrap around, you kind of curve up, it's past the stable, past the staff, and then what you basically do is you effectively go right through the middle and you carry on through. So just one more time there, fourth line down, curves up to the middle, curves down to the bottom, Pass the state of staff, 
and then comes through itself and onto there. Now that there is a perfect example of a treble clef and which is talking about all of the notes from that middle C which is here if we're talking about the note itself um, all the way up so we could keep going higher and higher and higher again um, and that there is just telling the musician um, whether the piano player guitar player violin flute whatever it happens to be um, an idea of exactly the sort of note that they're supposed to be playing you know, the pitch as well as the rhythm so make sure that you have a go there on page five of your workbook now also on page five we've got a few examples of treble clefs that don't look right so uh, we're going to have a look at these ones here and uh, very very quickly figure out which ones work and which ones don't now in this particular case here this first one um, and I've worked with a number of different students here they've identified that this is not one that would work the only thing that is wrong with it, it starts at the right place it kind of curves in the right way but the flick is wrong so that one won't work for us. This one here starts off with that G, curves around, hits the middle line, comes down to the bottom, curves all the way up, just past the stable staff, um, curves all the way down again. That one would work. So I'm going to circle this. That one is accurate for me. I'm happy with that. This next one here, this one won't work. Um, for a couple of reasons. It starts off at the wrong place. It doesn't start off on that fourth line down. Uh, it starts a bit further up. The curves aren't exactly in the right place. Um, everything else about it works, but it's, it's just physically further up than what it needs to be. So that one won't work for us. This one here, yeah, I've, I've got no reason for it not to work. It starts off at that fourth line. It goes up to the middle line, comes down to the bottom line, curves itself up just past the stable staff, crumbs through everything. There is no reason why that would not be a valid stable like treble clef in this particular case. Um, that next one beside it, absolutely the same. This one here, now this is, a tr this is a tricky one. Now it starts off with the right place. However, the problem that we have with this one is that it goes the wrong way. So rather than curving off to the right, this one here curves off to the left. So it's done everything in reverse, except for that last little tail flick. So this one here, absolutely not. We're not gonna accept it, won't work. We've got our second to last one there. Um, it starts off at the right place. It kind of kind of follows the principle that we're after. However, the problem this time here is rather than doing one curve and then up and down through, it's done a couple as it's gone for its own kind of a joy ride. So this one here will not cut it. Okay, By putting extra curves in there and stuff, it's not going to be able to kind of give you bonus points in regards to drawing a treble cliff. And this last one here, as much as that one there doesn't hit the top there, it is pretty darn close. So I would give that a pass in this particular instance. So in your books on page five, uh, with the workbook's available down in the feed below. Uh, first one, no. Second one, yes. Third one, no. Fourth and fifth, yes. Uh, and then only your last one is going to be the one that are going to be able to get that seal of approval in regards to triple cliffs. So... Uh, in addition to this, what we're going to do here, and oh, I've mentioned it already, treble clef is also known as a G clef. Now, it's called that because, oh, let's move there. Uh, it's generally got that kind of G sort of shape, or traditionally G sort of shape, uh, and it was also starting off on that G note. So, for example, here, out of all these notes here, that's in a blue, 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 A, B, G, A, E, and F there. It starts on that G, so there's that G note on that line, that's where this starts. Comes up to the middle, comes at the bottom. That treble clef there is proving that each of these notes ha uh, happens to belong. In this case here, it's an A note, it's a B, it's a G, it's a A, that's an E, and that's an F. Uh, do note that I am writing them all in capitals. Um, I'll explain why in uh, future lessons exactly why that is the case. Okay, so treble clef starts off at that G, goes up to the middle line, goes down to the bottom line, curves all the way up past the stable staff, comes through, and the wee flick there at the end. Right. So, 
why care about that? Well, the fact is that within our music, what's going to tend to happen is we're going to have a treble clef or another version of a clef at the start, and then we're going to have a whole pile of notes following up. Now, within all of these notes, we tend to keep them measured within a nice, easy thing, so, so we're able to read it nice and tidily. So, to make it easy to read our music, it tends to be structured into bars. Bars tend to be, more often than not, they tend to be in sets of four beats. Uh, not always, but like, like often, like our ear just naturally wants to see them in that way there. Um, those bars are also called measures, as that's another name for them. Now, bar lines, they're the things that are able to divide all of these bars in here. So the musician, you know, the piano player, the violin player, flute player, whatever it happens to be, is able to look at the music and go, oh, we're at that point of the music. Uh, and when the piece of music is complete, what we tend to have is a bit of a double bar line. Now you notice within this here, uh, we've got the treble clef at the start, we've got uh, we sharps, it's called a sharp symbol, not a hashtag. Uh, we've got a series of different notes going up here, and then at this point here, we've got a bar line. Now we've got half of these notes here, we've got a couple of whole notes, we've got that one there. Now that bar line there is effectively representing the fact that we have reached a particular part of the music so that we can easily count it as we go along. So here's bar one, bar two, so we've got a bar between there and there. We've got a bar three here, so these are, are the bar line just to make it nice and neat. Each of these has equal value on each other unless it specifies otherwise. And then we've got our other bar here. Notice right at the end of this particular piece of music how we've got two lines here. That's just a really, really significant kind of, like it's kind of like a full stop on our piece of music to say, right, okay, song done, boom, move on. All right, so that's bars and bar lines. Now, on page, 28 within your booklets. All I really want you to do within this here, and this is super, super easy, is from the top of that first line down to uh, the last line there, you're effectively drawing a really, really straight line. Just boom, straight down. So that there, boom, straight down, straight down, straight down. Give me, oh, whoops, I'm going to be better than that. Uh, give me, say, five of those. So one, two, three, four, Five, and for the sake of it, because I've got too much space here, I'm going to do my last one. But because it's the end of a piece, I'm going to do two bar lines. That's representing the fact that this is all done and dusted. Right, so what I want to do here, draw a double line to complete this piece of music. We've got an F, an A, a G, a C, F, A, G, C, F, G, A, B, or B flat in this particular case. And then it finishes off on a C. That's the end of the piece. One line, two line. So, bars or measures are divided up by all these different lines that are done in equal amounts all the way through, often four beats, but not always. And from that we're able to get a nice easy measure of exactly whereabouts we happen to be. And it always finishes off with two of those lines to be able to really snap it off there at the end, just like the full stop on a piece of music. Now, rhythm music, let's say for example, I gave this to somebody who was in an orchestra who was playing tambourine, and that, that, was, that was his or her thing. Um, they don't have a whole pile of different notes to be able to choose from. All they effectively have is just this one noise, that kind of tap um, that happens there, or maybe it's a cymbal where they crash it all together. So within this, same thing applies, it's just a single line this time. So what you need to do on page 28 of your workbooks is draw a single line for me and you're just basically going to do exactly the same as what we did before. You're just gonna create little vertical lines. Now these here are creating really, really defined points. Now you'll notice that right at the end, I put two of those bar lines in, that they're representing the fact that this here would be the end of this particular piece of music. At the moment, there's not really a lot going on with it. This is kind of a blank piece of music, but that's that's fine. Now, in this here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna complete the sentence. This is on page 28, so music is divided into bars, which are, can also be called measures. Dividing these particular bars are these bar lines, whether it's on a rhythm stave like that, or whether it's on one of the ones from the previous page where we had them on those 
um, different parts there. So we're dividing these different sets of melody. At the end of a piece of music, there is always a double bar line, and that's like the full stop for a particular piece of music. Okay, so all of that information there is on page 28. Make sure that you're able to um, be able to insert that information within your notes. Uh, if it, for whatever reason you need to pause and go back a wee step there, you're more than welcome. You've got the ability to do that, but it's really important that you get an idea that bars have uh, a particular kind of measure or your bars or measures have a particular um, section of notes that they're covering. They're separated by these bar lines and that's going to be able to make it easier for the musician to be able to read. Right, let's have a quick wee game. Now, this is interesting from my point of view because at the moment I'm all I'm doing is basically talking to my phone uh, as it's videoing me at this particular point. So what I'm going to do is kind of imagine that somebody is kind of looking at this and and knowing what they're all about. So um, within this, it's a bit of a test on some of the things that we've already been able to work through here. So for example, true or false, music notes are circular. I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about that. So are they circular? Now if you said that they are not, then you are correct because in this particular instance here, those notes, and I'll, I'll just choose a random place here, aren't circular like this, so across there, they are kind of more of an oval sort of shape, kind of like that. And they do fit on the line or the space within the stave. All right, right, let's go person two. So yeah, ha have a bit of a think. Now here's your next question. Uh, true or false, music note in a space should touch the lines above and below, but not go over them. Now I didn't really allude to that before, but if you kind of picked up on the hints that I did from a drawing and stuff, you'll notice that that is true. So within that stave, so one, two, three, four, five, so here goes our five lines of our stave, uh, and our four spaces in between, uh, we've got the note there would be okay to go there, however, it would not be okay, whoops, I'll go back there, it would not be okay to go like that, because at this point, you start confusing it for other notes. You start thinking, well, I mean, that one there's definitely an F, but is this a G, is it an A because it's on the space, or is it a B because it's on that line? So you, you can't you can't do that. So you need to make sure that yeah, it's hitting the top line, hitting the bottom line there, and be able to fill that entire space as much as possible. Let's go another couple of these. So, music notes are placed on lines and in now you don't have a lot of options with this particular answer. I'm pretty sure you've already got your answer here. So lines or spaces. So for example, uh, this one here is on a space. If I wanted to draw one on a line, I would go like so. And notice how I've got a little bit of space below and a little bit of space above. Right, let's go another one here. So music, something, is the study of how music is written and notated. Now this is what this whole lesson's all about. So what we are learning about is music theory. It is the written language of something that we hear day to day with when we're listening to um, music within a movie, within television, within radio, mo like 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 all over the place. We are listening to this. So this is just it in a written sort of form. All right. So now what I want you to do. And I'll, get, I'll give, you, give you a little bit of time to be able to do this. Is to be able to make sure that you've got yourself a blank piece of paper. Now within this blank piece of paper, and I'm just going to correct this here. Yep, cool. So within this blank piece of paper, what you're going to do is you're going to, uh, for the sake of this, we're going to have four questions. Here goes question one, here goes question two, question three, and question four. What's going to happen is when I click on these here, these melodies are going to match up to these four tunes here. Now, there's a couple of things that you should be looking for as somebody trying to be able to connect the dots, I guess. Uh, one is, how many notes can you physically see? So, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six physical notes in the A, so you're going to be listening to six notes. Uh, within B, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and C, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got seven within D here as well. What you will also notice is that some of these are going to be longer than others. So if it's a hollow note like this, it's going to be a longer note. If it's got a line kind of connecting it to another one there, they're kind of holding hands because they're smaller notes and they're like, they, you know, just as much as you need to hold hands with mum or dad and stuff when you're crossing the road, it's the same kind of deal. So let's have a quick wee listen, probably enough time that you would have got your piece of paper by now. Here goes tune number eight. I'm going to play these twice to see if you can figure out which from this melody matches up to one of these letters here. So here goes melody A. Going to turn it up a little bit. So here's the second playing of melody A, and we've got to figure out exactly where it happens to be. So straight away from listening to those there, I already know that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine notes, and we've got kind of like a traveling up. Traveling up, da da da. It says it kind of dips out at the end. Now let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six notes here, so it definitely can't be that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it could be that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, that's too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My guess at this point here would be that it would be in B. Now let's have a quick wee look at this. So playing again. So traveling up, traveling up, then notes, goes down, comes back up again. So you notice that the note, based on how high or how low it is, is representing um, the, how high or how low the pitch is. So in this first answer, if you chose B, you're correct. Let's have a look at number two. Dun, 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 dun. So it's got six notes, I wonder which one it's going to be. Let's play it one more time. Now I've got my hunches on this one here. I know that B, too many notes won't work for us, so we're not even going to worry about that. Dun, dun, three, four, five, six, seven. That's too many notes there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus some more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's have a listen again one more time. So, Travelling, da 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 da. If you chose A, you'd be correct in this particular instance. Okay, so there goes the answer for number two. Let's have a look at number three. So we've got a few notes here. We'll play it one more time. Now, if you're able to count the number of notes, it's a huge asset to you. Uh, one, th one other thing you'll probably notice is that that melody there was a lot softer than others. Now, this here, and I'll, I'll let you know about this in further lessons, but that F symbol means forte, which is an Italian term, which means loud. Uh, loud. And this symbol here with the little MP means mezzo uh, piano. But oh, that's horrendous. Delete, 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 delete. Ah, here we go. So mezzo piano, as, as in like the instrument, which means moderately soft. Oh. So it means moderately soft here. Da, 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 da. All right, we're going to try that again. So in this particular case here, the one that it matches to, da, 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 da. That there kind of accented sort of note, but da, 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 da. 
Da -da. That one goes for a little bit longer. Now by default, you'll probably already know what the last one is, but out of our ones here. So this is us looking at A this time. Whoop. Sorry, I'll strike that. <laughs> We've already got A here. So looking at C this time. Extended there. So our last answer there was C. So all we're doing within music theory is we're being able to compare the um, physical notes that we can see on the page to the ones that we can hear uh, as we're going through. All right, I'll just like click that up there a little bit there. It's just dragging down a little bit. Right, so the last part to this first lesson is that you are able to have a look and see if you can find some of these key words. So some of the words there are stave, staff, well both meaning the same thing. So they're both representing uh, those five lines and those four spaces. Uh, bars, which are the, or also known as measures, which isn't up here. But we've got bar lines is what separates those bars. We've got the lines, the spaces, notes, which are that kind of oval sort of shape, not circular. Treble, as in treble clef. We've got bass, which is coming up, which is going to be lower notes. We've got clef, we already figured out. Music and theory, pitch and rhythm. And what you will find is, within here, uh, and I'll get you to have a little bit of a pause there as you're going through, because your answers look like that, okay? Which you'll be able to find over time. So, uh, congratulations on being able to reach the end of lesson one of music theory. Um, this here, is, as said, is gonna be a 14 lesson course, uh, which is gonna give you a really strong understanding of what music looks like on a page um, and compares to what you're able to hear within real life. Okay, so again, hello, my name is Calvin Cummings. Uh, thank you very much for being part of this lesson and I look forward to being able to teach you more of interactive music theory level one in the future. Cheers, bye.